I've been automating businesses for the last two years and this is the process that I follow for finding tasks to automate and also developing automations. Now I use this in my own business and also with my clients. So I've found a way that kind of works really well. And if you want to apply it to your business, then you can as well. So first things first is finding what tasks to automate. You don't want to jump really fast out of the gate and try and automate everything. It will lead to so much confusion and a, a bunch of automations that essentially aren't finished. So what I recommend for people starting out is take one step automations. So uh, starting with one action and one trigger. So if this happens, then something else happens. What this allows you to do is start building little automations that accelerate your ability to perform. So an example of something like this is when a lead comes in through your website, auto populate it into your CRM and you can just do that via Zapier or make whichever platform you would like to use. Now, these little tasks are really good because one, they save you a bunch of time, but they also start to show you the ability that automation has. So you're starting to deploy robots across your business that start to take care of things that you may not have liked doing or take up a bunch of time or easily forgotten. Uh, They're the prime candidates for automation. So where you should start would be different for every business, whether you're brand new into business or you have a bunch of employees. Finding where your specific start point is different for everyone. However, I would look at your lowest hanging fruit And if you have tasks that are super manual and you have a lot of staff members or yourself, finding yourself doing the same thing over and over again, that's probably your best candidate. Where you shouldn't start is multi-step zap, uh, multi-step automations. So things that require you to do multiple things based off something that happens. So say for example, you get a lead and you want it to message your team, update your CRM, update your client tracker, and do a bunch of other tasks, that's probably not the best thing to do. You should probably just iterate based on your first step. So action, trigger, or trigger, action, trigger, action. Instead of trigger, action, 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 action. It just makes it a bit more complicated for you to learn the process of automating. What tasks shouldn't be automated? Tasks that shouldn't be automated are either, in my opinion, one, that are super critical to your service delivery uh, in terms of personalization. So for example, if you send a welcome email that is hyper-personalized to the conversation that you had with a client on a sales call or whatever, and it contains their onboarding information, but you make it super personalized to them, I wouldn't suggest automating that. Say, have a framework for that instead. Other tasks that probably shouldn't be automated are things that require a lot of human input. So human input is really hard to monitor with automation and making sure that things get done properly, it can be a bit tough. So if it's a highly technical task or if it's a highly uh, customizable task, I guess what the word would be to say, uh, probably look at trying something a bit simpler first. Now, the biggest thing I look for in tasks to be automated are repeatable. So just hands down, repeatable tasks, the easiest way to get as many wins as possible. So that's how I find tasks to automate. Moving into the actual development life cycle of automation. Now, I stole the way that I do things from the software development life cycle. And the reason I did that is because I studied software development at uni and I was able to pick this up pretty quick and apply it to automation as well. So it doesn't um, have to be as robust as this, your process, but you can follow something similar to really reap the benefits of a regimented process into approaching things. So when you uh, approach automation, if you follow it in this analysis, design, development, testing, deployment, and maintenance kind of approach, you will have a, you'll actually have a system that you're following in order to automate your task. It's not just like going straight into development and just open Zapier or make and just like trying to plot things out. It just doesn't work as well as to when you actually have a plan in place. So the first step is analysis and that's essentially what I'm doing here. So this is finding your task um, automate. Pretty much you would be listing off the task. So a couple of things, it would be task um, at hand. So the business comes to you saying that they have a problem with X, Y, Z. That is your task to solve that problem with automation. The second thing would be essentially uh, which platform you're going to use. So if you're using no code, is it make or Zapier? Alternatively, if you're using code, maybe Python would be the way that you would go about doing it. So in the analysis, I would find the task and I would talk about the platforms that I'm going to use. Also, if there's any platforms in here that I'm going to be integrating, whether that be Slack or or whatever, I would probably leave that into the design element where I would set up a mind map. But for the analysis, I would just look at the major task slash problem at hand and also what I'm going to use to fulfill essentially the automation. So the second step is design. I would actually create a mind map of the automation of the automation. So what this does, it gives me a a view of how each step is going to link together. So if there is 
a automation with multiple different paths. Uh, we'll be able to see which path that this can go in. This is kind of like storyboarding before you actually film like a shot. If you ever created content or anything before, um, or made mini movies storyboarding really helps you visualize what's actually going to happen before it does so i use this in terms of my design phase where i can look at where i might potentially enter issues and it also allows me to go back to the business or look internally and say this is what we're planning on doing and they can conceptualize that a lot easier than if they're looking at just like an automation uh, workflow in Zapier or, or Make or whatever. So that's what I do for design. The next step is the actual development. So this is where I go through and actually start building the automation as per the mind map. Uh, this phase is, is quite simple with no code tools. So just making sure that everything is connected and you have the right logic involved, conditional logic, whatever you're using, making sure that you um, have every application that's required to be connected, it is connected. So for development, you can use platforms like Zapier or Make or N8N or IFTTT is another one is one that I've been looking into recently. It seems to be more home automation based. So like just doing things for personal use, but it's super cheap. So if you're looking for an alternative to get started, you can use that. NADN is a decent option as well. They work in longer workflows. So if you are looking to build more robust, so does make, but Zapier is always going to be the easiest one to get started on. The next step is testing. So testing is something that I don't think a lot of people uh, value of how long it takes, but that's a story for another day. However, I uh, will go through my testing process. So obviously I'm testing as I'm developing because that's the kind of uh, methodology I take is te uh, develop, test, develop, test, develop, test. Um, when I'm building long workflows, I definitely need to do this. But when I'm doing short workflows, I probably can develop the whole thing and then test it. Um, I just find it easier to develop and test at the same time. So what I'm looking for with testing is um, data consistency. So making sure the actual data that's being sent from one place to another is actually correct. Uh, two, I'm looking for to make sure the actual uh, platforms are connected and they're actually speaking to each other. They're speaking to the right account and the information is being processed across. Um, this testing phase, I go through uh, like dev testing. So me first testing it and then I push it back onto the client if it's a client work and I, I get client testing done. So client testing in, uh, requires the actual user that's going to be using uh, the automation to test it. Now, this can be testing and training. So it, this could be a two, two prong approach to this stage because with every automation, you need to understand that there's going to be a level of, there's going to be a skill gap between where the person is who's been doing something manually to where they need to be, which is where they're going to be fully automated. So, or partially automated. So, when it comes to testing, it's a decent time for you to train then people as well. So you can say, hey, client, um, I'm just looking at deploying this automation. I would love for you to test it. I'm going to send you over a quick loom of how it works. Uh, if you could fill out this form or complete this step in your workflow, uh, it will now then go to this place and you can then show them what that's meant to look like on a loom um, or a video and then they can test it out and tell you what their experience with that is. One thing that testing and training allows you to do is see things from a client's point of view. So as developers, we can kind of get caught up in the technical and we kind of lose the client side of things where clients are the ones going to be using this, right? So if it's not intuitive or if it doesn't make sense to them, they're probably not going to use it. Uh, and that decreases our effectiveness because you could have the best automation in the world, but if no one uses it, it's worthless, right? And then the last phase is deployment. So actually going live. Now going live can look different in every project. However, pretty consistently what I find is when I go live, it's a matter of handing things over to the client, whether that be login credentials or that be actual um, SOPs, writing the uh, standard operating processes for that client. So how they're going to actually interact with the system is going to be really big uh, in that handover. And that's usually like a formal message or either on Slack or email, whatever it might be with a folder of all the SOPs. So they can follow it and they can potentially troubleshoot things if need be, uh, if they get stuck. So for me, deployment is actually a handover and not like a go live or whatever, because it's just a bit different as per automation versus software development. Then maintenance. So ongoing maintenance and hosting. This for me, is a matter of just 
making sure that the automations don't break. And if I get a notification that a zap has failed, or if I see that there's an update to an application and I need to update it because the API has been updated, I will go through and do that. But I just have monitoring on, on Zapier or other platforms to make sure that I don't miss any of these because maintenance is a big one in terms of uh, staying live. So if your client is expecting something to happen, but there's been an update and you haven't caught that in time and they don't have the automation capacity that they previously have, they will be upset because they expect these things to work automated automatedly. And when it doesn't, people have become reliant on the automation. So they are going to notice a lot quicker and reverting back to the manual process is what we want to avoid. So that's really what maintenance is, is catching things before they get to the client. So for me, this is my process that I go through. It's not perfect. I still make mistakes and there are plenty of ways that it can be improved, but I really... This part here, so finding the tasks to be automated is really the fun part for me and obviously the, the development is because you can actually find out in this um, in this stage what tasks are actually worth being automated and what's probably not the best thing to be automated for the client because they may have a crap process and their, their workflow might already be uh, like it might actually be inefficient and automating it is just going to be an inefficient workflow anyway. So finding that kind of stuff, improving on the business and acting like a bit of a consultant there uh, is what I really enjoy doing. So um, if you want me to do this in your business, <laughs> you can uh, reach out to me below. Uh, I'm taking on some clients this month. And if you want to apply this into your own business, then feel free. Um, I would love to hear some stories about how you've Im implemented this kind of life cycle into your business. I hope that was helpful. Bye. P.S. Do you like my haircut?